Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy Friday. I'll be here from uh, Helsinki, Finland. Nice cold day. I am all caffeinated up and eating <laughs> enough ground beef to fucking feed an African village. So let's get over here to the live scene as Bitcoin has had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a non-event actually in the last 12 hours. But as always, wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest before we get actually get into this. And Bitcoin kind of resting on the uh, the daily 21 exponential moving average right now. And we have had a cross to the downside of the 10 simple and the 21 exponential moving average right over here. Uh, so to me, that is very, very important. However, you will notice that this one has been snaking around. And I think it's a little bit more visually apparent that what we're really doing is consolidating this area. So while there are, you know, clues here and there of which way that this consolidation does get resolved right now, right here, right now. I would be looking at this and I'd be saying to myself, uh, you know, make it easy on yourself. It's basically the same area that we've been looking at for the last, uh, what was it? The, I mean, basically like the last three days, but essentially working on what could be an ascending triangle right over here, which technically is a bullish, uh, uh, more, more, more often resolved to the bull side uh, pattern. But again, as with any pattern, uh, as the inverted head and shoulders players will probably or have found out over the last year, you don't want to play it before it's actually uh, before it's actually, you know, confirmed. So above this area right over here, that would be confirmation of the upside above 3900. That's also your four hour 200 exponential moving average, this purple line also kind of aligning with or, or getting around the 382 Fibonacci retracement. Uh, if we do put on the 200 simple, that should round out the bottom of this support. In fact, actually a little bit lower than that, hanging around the 0.5. But uh, but more importantly, Bitcoin has found support off this uh, horizontal right here. So we spoke about this last night that while Bitcoin, you know, was coming down off this area right over here, I believe that we caught this trade on stream below uh, 38 to 35. I believe I showed that one last night. Um, you know, have to kind of close it when you come back down and, and take a stab at this lower support down around here. Just because overall, you know, when you've been consolidating for the last uh, for the last three days, you want to be looking at the volume over here to kind of denote when this thing's going to break out or break down. And right here, right now, we have nothing. You know, we have, we have nothing signaling that that we've had resolution either which way. Just a nice, uh, very orderly drop off in volume. You know, going from here to here, you can actually just even put a nice trend line on it. Don't need to always do that, but something like that is kind of what I'm thinking right right now. And, uh, and essentially, that's basically the name of the game until, you know, until it breaks either which way. Now, if it does break to the upside, you can make a measured move on this baby. And let's go see what that guy points to. And let's see, right over here. Yeah, I'd be pointing you back to kind of your prior high right over here at around 4,200. That would certainly get all of the inverted head and shoulders uh, <laughs> screamers on crypto Twitter very, very excited, saying that we got the inverted head and shoulders in, baby, and it's time to go onto the fucking moon, which... I would say this is actually not an inverted head and shoulders. The volume characters on this are completely wrong. The shape is also wrong. And, well, more importantly, uh, we don't necessarily have this part in just yet. This would be making a massive assumption. And you'd imagine that the first kind of pass on this level right here will probably be a, be a sell, even if it did happen. Um, but uh, but all this area right over here, you know, is resistance. So uh, while you do have a measured move actually pointing you all the way up over here, first things first, it needs to be confirmed one. So Bitcoin has to get, you know, close basically like a two hour dildo above the 200 exponential right over here, 3900 ish area. Um, and then second thing second, you know, you do have this nice declining trend line right over here, which has been kind of governing our lower highs throughout this whole um, consolidation after dropping down below the 4000 level. So overall, you know, nothing's really changed from a higher time frame perspective. Bitcoin is still in a downtrend, uh, and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And the trend has been going for over a year strong, uh, just lower highs and lower lows. Again, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. A lot of people on crypto Twitter, a lot of people on, you know, TradingView, Reddit, fucking crypto, YouTube, all these great social media venues getting very, very bullish right now. Of course, as always, that's a great counter indicator, typically speaking. Um, but, uh, but you know, if Bitcoin does break that 3,900 level, you do have to entertain those sorts of thoughts because while I don't believe that this that, uh, that we're looking at in inverted head and shoulders, I believe that we are looking at something like this. Uh, well, I guess it's already in there, but basically a descending broadening wedge, which uh, typically is a bullishly resolved pattern, although you could very easily make another run at the lower support trend line of this guy, which will rapidly decline uh, actually below 3,000. But again, you know, same thing over here. If you can close the daily dildo above this upper resistance, like 4,000 a share, we'll call it. Yeah, there's a measure move pointing you, uh, pounding you all the way to about 4,900. But again, playing bullish things in a bearish market is a great recipe for getting wrecked AF. Now, again, um, I love playing bearish things in a bearish market. I love playing bullish things in a bullish market, but I don't like, you know, crossing streams on that, playing, uh, playing, playing sword boy. Anyways, uh, you would have resistance along the way. And a lot of the times what you will see if you do play a counter trend pattern, 
pattern, so to speak, as, as something like this is, you know, you come up to your first resistance and then probably fail there. Or, you know, you have another big one right over here at around 4550. And that's going to be a big area of interest as well. So, you know, a lot of times you'll see the breakouts fail, even if it does get the breakout to begin with. You saw this um, earlier in 2018, right over here, when Bitcoin was essentially in something like this, right? It was kind of in, in, in what looks like a falling wedge. Sorry, let's actually draw it as a falling wedge. So this this was kind of painted in there to get all the all the perma bulls really excited. But we had something like this going on up until this July high right over here. Uh, you got a throw over. You got a um, you you actually got the bullish uh, resolution of this, but it was quick re quick quickly rejected at your next you know at your next like resistance right over here. Also your 200 simple moving average on the daily total time frame. The last time that that Bitcoin's ever got anywhere near it actually. Um, so again, you know, keep that in mind. A lot of time you will see shit like that. And, uh, and that's kind of the, <laughs> and that's kind of why I don't like playing counter trend patterns. So again, something like that, you know, is what I want to be really, uh, really aware of if it did break out to the upside. And again, I'm making assumptions here. I'm not saying that it's going to break out to the upside. In fact, I would, I'm going to present the case for the downside, uh, more, more appropriately. Cause I do believe that that's probably, you know, it's on the side of the trend. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go with the trend until, until told otherwise, uh, that's just been the winning side for the last over a year. So that's good enough for me. Um, but basically, this guy right over here, you know, if, if you if you did pop out, you know, you'd, you'd have to deal with your farmer, your former high right over here, 4300. Bitcoin has not made a higher high on the daily, you know, in ages. So that would be a really good start. And, you know, if it hasn't done it just yet, well, again, I'm still going to go with the former trend. If that one gets taken out at 4300, then yeah, then uh, then 4550. If that one gets taken out, then yeah, then then probably, I mean, there's, there's just not much stopping you from 4900 to share. Yeah. A lot of people talking about uh, charts pointing all the way to 5200. I don't see it. Um, I don't believe that Bitcoin's going to. I I, I believe that Bitcoin's going to probably break three thousand before going back above five thousand, and uh, you know, of course, I can be wrong on that. That's an opinion thing right now. Um, but what is more important to me for getting you know a little bit more short term? Actually, I shouldn't see even, even say short term bullish. If this happened, I would really change my tune on Bitcoin overall. But if Bitcoin could both open and close a weekly dildo above this purple 200 exponential moving average right over here, that would drastically change my tune. Until that happens, you know, I, I, I would be saying uh, 3,000, uh, 3,000, or sorry, breaking 3,000 before uh, before going above 5,000. Now, I say that, and I don't want to instill in anyone's mind that I think the, that either of these things is happening anytime soon. In fact, I would say that it's more likely that Bitcoin's going to probably, and this is what my opinion is right now, is probably going to do something like this. Let's just get everything off. And we have a nice support floor kind of down around here at around 3,250, which, by the way, if you noticed over here on our weekly total time frame, that is the 200 simple moving average, which is very, very powerful as well. Nice horizontal around there as well. So 3250, like that for good confluence. Anyways, let's go back on over here to a fresh chart. And if we do put a nice descending triangle, um, or sorry, a nice descending, <laughs> just kind of giving it away right now, but a nice uh, descending resistance trend line right over here. Well, I mean, what are we working on right over here? Just lower highs and basically kind of getting stuck in the mud at 3000s. Now, I am making assumptions here. This is my opinion. This is what I think is probably going to happen. Um, but of course, you know, I don't trade my opinion. Uh, but this is, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin loves its ascending triangles. I love descending triangles as well. I love ascending triangles as well. In, bull in bullish markets and symmetrical triangles uh, have a pretty damn good degree of playing out um, uh, as well. An equal opportunity pattern, actually. But, uh, but you know, Bitcoin actually does have a history of playing out these ascending triangles. In fact, you saw one for about almost a year, about almost a year in this area right over here. Could we play, could we do the same thing right over here? Again, I don't think it's going to do, I don't think it's going to take a year. I do think it's going to take some time. Technically speaking, you would have an apex on this guy at uh, end of, or sorry, middle of April of this year. Um, Again, I think that it gets resolved, you know, before, uh, well before then. Um, hopefully, you know, I, I, I just hope so in the in the next couple in the next couple months. Um, but uh, but again, I just want to kind of offer up perspective that this is likely going to take some time. Anyways, for the time being, while I did just present the more bullish scenario of this uh, getting resolved to the upside, I actually do think that this probably does get resolved to the downside, just because well, it's on the side of the trend, so that's you know I'm, I'm always going to go with that. Um, even though this is technically a more bullishly resolved pattern, um, we do have you know our oscillators suggesting that there is still momentum downwards. This is your four hour stoke still pointed down 
hours, plenty of room to go. Just getting into the neutral zone right now. Uh, let's go to the eight hour. I believe eight hour is hinting at across the downside. Certainly a lost momentum. Is it going to be across the downside or not? Well, that remains to be seen, but technically not just yet. So that could be a, uh, 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 that could be a wild card. 12 hours still gaining momentum to the upside actually. So that would be in the favor of the bulls. And then daily still going down, still going down, actually rejecting across the upside yesterday. So this is what I put more weight on. And overall, you know, I'd be looking at that and, uh, and, and that would probably be on the side of the, uh, probably, or sorry, it would be on the side of the bears. Um, could you make the same sort of measure move going to the downside on this guy? Oh, by the way, the measure move would actually be pointing you to your green 55 exponential moving average on the daily to time timeframe, not only this nice horizontal lining up with your prior highs, but also that guy as well. So I do like that. Um, but going down, going back down into lower time frames, Bitcoin's actually selling down a little bit right now. Um, you know, if it did break onto the downside, yeah, you do. I mean, it is kind of pointing you back down towards this 3450-ish area right over here. Um, a nice, nice horizontal support trend line. But you know, again, I do believe that uh, you're gonna have your bounces along the ways. But overall, probably, probably do do begin the descent down here to your prior lows at around 3300, give or take a few bucks. Um, again, kind of filling out that muddy territory that I just laid out as a potential scenario for um, you know on our GDAX chart. Uh, you know, basically just making it another fucking descending triangle. I think that would really dash a lot of hopes and uh, and again uh, understand that this is likely going to take a long time and uh, to kind of wrap up my thoughts in just a few sound bites you know it's probably going to take a long time to kind of you know uh, basically sh you know cons uh, consolidate and resolve this current area that we're in between 3,000 and, and like I guess 4,000 you could say um, and then yes I am bearish looking for lower lows uh, probably you know at least least into the low 2000s and um, and then, and then long term, I'm pretty fucking bullish on Bitcoin. But again, the time frames on these is 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 very very important to understand. Just because people will hear that and think, okay, just go short right now because it's 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 likely going down. Well, no, this can take a few months. So this is likely going to oscillate just like the just like the area at six thousand where Bitcoin kind of you know would, would come down every time it came down to six thousand. Everyone would get super bearish, posting charts of like you know five five thousand, which in hindsight is like no, it's not going to fucking five thousand. It's going below four thousand, you fool. Um, and then and then every time it got you know got uh, got up to one of its lower highs, which uh, you know as always people people are just more more apt to getting like ignorantly bullish than bearish it's i don't know what it is it's 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 so strange um but uh but but everyone gets super bearish or sorry super bullish on those times right over there well doesn't it sound familiar to what we're doing right now everyone got super bullish right over here we're going back to five thousand tone vase uh right over here we're going to five thousand tone base again again this guy's been buying every fucking hundred dollars down or you know again I, I don't know if i actually have that exactly right but uh from what i'm told that's it, it's you know the difference between an analyst and a trader and i'm actually not i'm actually not looking for five thousand uh i think i think lower lows before before breaking above you know really even mid even even above this kind of high right over here although i shouldn't i shouldn't necessarily necessarily say that you know that's that's actually very much possible what i'm more what i'm more comfortable saying is that as long as we're both opening and and closing both opening and closing uh weekly dollars below this guy yeah i'm uh, I, I don't i believe that's you know it's gonna be lower lower first than higher um second i know that's not too, too profound to say but that also means you know my general bias my general disposition will be looking for shorts within this range i really don't like playing longs in a bear market it's been a bit i mean just just taking shorts for the last year has been incredibly profitable I'll never understand the obsession with trying to, you know, beat him by low, by low. And I know that sounds crazy, but uh, there's a great saying, nothing's ever too high to buy and nothing's ever too low to sell. And that's coming from one of the most legendary traders of all time. Um, understand that, you know, a lot of a, a lot of trader axioms are actually counter to, I think, what traditional, uh, you know, traditional intuition would be. P people think, oh, yeah, just it's, it's low. It's low, bro. So we should buy. It's like, what's low? What's fucking low, man? Because a lot of things actually broke their lows for the year and just made more and more lows. So what is low? That's it. that's just your subjective opinion on the market. What the market's actually telling you is is otherwise. So as always, the market is right. The market is never wrong. The market is never wrong. Your opinion is subjective and actually highly. Uh, well, I won't get into that too much. I don't want to get into the psychological side uh, right now, right here, right now. But let's just go through the lower time frames and uh, see if we can see any more clues in this guy. Um, 
We'll have to go into Mr. Buterol, I think, for like the rubber match, but uh, because because he actually has shown a few things. But uh, two hour right over here, actually being rejected by the twenty one exponential. Um, let's see what our off sweaters saying. Yeah, uh, two hour RSI also getting rejected by the exponential right over here, getting rejected from the neutral zone as well. Um, let's see, uh, two hour DMI, not telling you too much, but uh, is telling you that a move is likely coming, uh, likely coming. This would suggest, you know, uh, uh, sell pressure, um, but not fully conclusive either which way, I'd, I'd say. Again, I don't want to make this sound like the end-all, be-all. Overall, it's going to come down to which one's broken first, 37, uh, 3750 and, like, close a two-hour dildo below there, or 3900 um, above there. We can narrow it down to that area. Uh, four-hour, oh, man, missed, missed a sell signal on the four-hour on this guy. Damn it. This, uh, I guess I was sleeping during this time. Um, or, no, I wasn't sleeping. It was right over here, so that's uh, that's nice. Or yeah um what about the eight hour eight hours you know we looked at the stokes yeah you're not really seeing anything in our in our other oscillators right now um yeah it's uh it's it's pretty inconclusive as far as this chart goes i would say though again going back to what i began this uh this stream with you know putting it on the 10 simple moving average and looking at you know our 12 hour and our uh, and let's go through the 12 hour daily and, and two day and also three day because we close that one as well um but the but the blue 30 simple moving average which is what i care most about slope analysis for on the 12 hour has flatlined after going uh after going up for a little while uh during this nice uptrend right over here so that to me is Actually, well, actually, no, it's sloped down a little bit right now. So, yeah, that would be a little bit more bearish. Um, we are, oh, is the red 10 simple below or above? It's actually just ever so slightly above right now, $2 above our yellow 21 exponential moving average. But, again, that's so inconclusive how mm, it's it's going to cross to the downside on the next tick most likely as well, unless there's a nice rally in the next uh, three hours, you know, back above 30, uh, 3850, I'd imagine. Um so that, you know, too inconclusive. Uh, daily over here would be giving you the other signal, actually. We have the 10 simple crossing the downside of the, of the yellow 21. Yesterday's daily closing below the 21 exponential as well. Um, and I would imagine, you know, if, if we do take out, I mean, if we do take out yesterday's low at 37.50, that's, that's probably going to be enough as well. Um, but man, this one's making it difficult. And your blue 37 moving average on this guy is flatlined, essentially, maybe even a little bit up. Uh, so hey, you know, counterpoint to to uh, to what we just looked at. This is how this is how tight it's getting right now. Tight like a tiger, tight and sexual like a tiger. I love gold. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, this guy right over here today not telling us too much either. We're gonna have to wait until the end of the day essentially. Um, it will close a little bit later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But uh, do we close above or below the above or below the 10 simple moving average right here, which is currently around uh, 38.64. Um, 30, yeah, 38.64. So looking like it does want to close lower. Bitcoin actually selling off a little bit more right now. Uh, three day is being caressed, being corralled by the 10 simple moving average, using it as support. But again, we just got a new three day dildo, so not really too much to see on this guy. Uh, what about our two day Stokes? I'm curious. Yeah, two day Stokes over here are crossed down. We will get a new, a new tick on that later tonight. And two day DMI. Ooh, man, it is. It wants to hint, but it's uh, it's it's just it's a little bit shy right now. It's a little bit shy. Let's go see if we can see any clues in Mr. Buterol. He has been running the market, so I'm gonna go for him for the rubber match. Let's see what uh, let's see what he has to say. Let's go to the 12 hour first. Uh, 12 hour looking a little bit like a double top right over there. Let's go to an hourly. Hourly is a rejection, and it is revealed that lower time frames uh, do want to sell down a little bit right over here. That I mean, again, this is not like full on, you know, full on, full on rejection. Uh, volume on this guy again is still that of overall consolidation, but you will be printing, you know, overall um, uh, bearish divergence on this guy by now. Yeah, you can see that this is very obviously consolidation, uh, but bearish divergence going pretty much all the way through, actually, uh, especially on this last high getting kicked out of the more bullish uh, control zone. So Mr. Buterol would be suggesting that perhaps, um, you know, it, I mean, if this thing does take a leg up, you know, it's it's very likely going to hit 172. That's probably going to be a sell. But uh, but does it sell off right here is a real question. Things are not so easy to read right now. In fact, the daily 100 exponential is really harassing price action as it stands. Um, I don't know. So let's go. Let's go back to the two hour, and yeah, again, it looks like it wants to come down at, at least to 154 and a half. Uh, we caught the move yesterday to 149 and a half, uh, just about perfectly. Again, not. I don't want to make it sound like technical analysis always gets it like that well, but basically just filling out this area. But uh, if this thing fails to take off relatively soon, well, 
this is starting i mean it's pretty much making a rising wedge which i absolutely hate wedges of all so, of us of all sizes and shapes i'm i'm a wedge racist an outspoken wedge racist actually and i'd imagine that most most people playing patterns in general like i i can imagine that these people are not traders for a living um because in my experience patterns are the easiest thing to kind of paint in there um but this is typically a more a more bearishly resolved pattern however i'd be more i'd be more concerned about the the obvious kind of almost quasimodo like head and shoulder inverted head and shoulders being painted on the on the daily for uh for, for bitcoin itself um that to me is a lot more suspect and yes those patterns do get painted in because they're the most easy thing to see and people like talk about it because it makes them sound smart it's like oh my god we have an inverted head and shoulders you know what that fucking means can't go lower bro <laughs> so there you go you know it's 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 one of those things um that I found, especially in crypto, not to be as reliable as uh, as, as other trading assets. Uh, they do work. They certainly do work, you know, here and there. But I like to confirm more with our other with our other uh, indicators, and I don't see. I don't see what I'd be looking for just yet. Um, and of course, you know, you don't want to play it before it's actually like put into place to begin with. Um, and, I'd, and, I'd, and I'd argue pretty vehemently, vehemently that it's not an inverted head and shoulders because the volume's wrong, the, the shape's wrong, and all that good stuff's wrong. But I've already talked ad nauseum about that. Uh, okay, over here on GBDC, closing the day a little bit down, a little bit down, but more importantly, it looks to me like we are still respecting this overall downtrend resistance line over here. And GBDC has been a great leading indicator for Bitcoin over the past year. Does that correlation continue? Well, I mean, if it's been working for the last year, I mean, you know, again, I'll, I'll go, I'll go with the trend for a year until told otherwise. Until told otherwise, I will, uh, I'll go with, I'll, I'll go with what's been going on. Um, and as you can see right here, kind of already filling out that descending triangle uh, formation, having a few one, two, three uh, drops to the bottom right over here, and one, two, three, four uh, drives to the top right over here. So that is certainly a trend going both ways. And does does the volume work? Yeah, it does actually work for a descending triangle. Um, but that will be negated if it does if it does get above this area right over here. It does close like a two-hour dildo above uh, four dollars and sixty-two cents or so. Um, then that will be negated. But for now, you know, it is looking like looking like it's filling out, and that does kind of add a little bit more confluence to what I'm thinking on Bitcoin. Essentially, um, let's go check out uh, CMEs right now. CMEs are interesting as well, just because you know, even if Bitcoin does break down from where it is currently, you do have a nice gap down around here at around 36.55. So just like the gap right over here, which Bitcoin or sorry, which CMEs hit um, when Bitcoin essentially got to 3,900 on the last drive, which is which was one of the confluent factors telling me to sell. And and, uh, and what we spoke about, uh, I think it was like a couple, uh, was it two days ago or, or yesterday? I forget. Um, but either which way, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, same thing going on right over here. So even if Bitcoin does break down, this is probably going to be a buy in the first pass for a little bit of a scalp. Same sort of idea, essentially. Um, and, uh, and overall, we're just not... You know, you don't want to play something before it actually happens. You know, you probably bounce off, bounce off here. Now, if it if it returns twice to this area at 36.50 on CMEs, then that's going to be very, very likely a sell. Again, nothing's 100%. Technical analysis and trading is all about statistical setups, and uh, and essentially knowing when you're wrong. Um, but uh, but overall, you know that that's going to be a pretty high probability setup. I'll put it that way. Um, something that I'd certainly something that I'll probably be doing myself. Again, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, it's, I'm just sharing what I'm doing over here. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, by the way, for my own positions, I don't have anything going on. I'm actually cash right now. Uh, I went cash a little bit above 3,800. Um, just because I want to be playing, I want to be playing whichever one breaks first. So I basically went cash in the middle of this pattern right here. If 3750 breaks, then I'll then I'll uncover that and go back to being short or net short. Uh, and if 3900 breaks right over here, I probably won't. I might go. I might go long. There, there's actually really not much stopping me from this 4100 level right over here. So it's you know it's 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 worth playing um but i won't be you know a short trade in a bearish market i'm happy to i'm happy to put on a real position a long trade in a bearish market not so much just and just vice versa for for a bullish market again um have to keep, have to keep in mind the overall market cycle um so again you know so, so, something like that is what i'm thinking uh if bitcoin did get back into this range right over here i'd be a massive seller right when everyone thinks that this thing is breaking out into an inverted head and shoulders i'd at least tr i'd at least try a trade over there and there will be a big trade there there's going to be a massive trade um in the next uh, i guess it'd be like probably by end of month or early february in bitcoin and it's going to be one of these one of these uh three or four areas that we've been looking at so 
first things first, it could be this area right over here that we're currently at. This might just this might be the sell right here, and uh, and and that'll lead you back down to your former lows. You know, right around 3,300. Um, but if this breaks out to the upside, then then uh, then I'll try another trade right over here at around 4100-ish area. If that area breaks out, then I'll try another trade at 4340. And then if that area breaks out, then I'll try another trade at 4550. Um, one of those trades is going is gonna to likely be the next big, you know, swing high. Uh, now, of course, this thing is still making lower highs, uh, so so you know it's going to be pretty difficult to get back above 4100. Doesn't mean it can't be done, but just from you know from an overall trend perspective, do you want to keep that area in mind? Um, now, here's the thing though: if 4550 does get taken out. That's when I actually change that around and say, okay, not going to be trying those shorts anymore. And I'd probably and I and I imagine that 4550 does get taken out. That's probably also going to come in confluence with a weekly deal of both opening and closing above the 200 exponential. So again, you know, these sorts of things, they all have, they all have interrelation with each other, uh, whichever one it is, you know, uh, you know, it's just, just have to wait really, uh, no opinion needed again, no opinion fucking needed. And right now I don't have a strong opinion. I do see more things pointing to the downside than to the upside, um, in this current consolidation, but you know, again, uh, I'd, I'd rather just sit back and let price action tell me what to do. Um, not really in a hurry because I don't, I, I actually don't believe that 3,300 is getting, or sorry, 3,200 is getting broken anytime soon. I believe that you're going to get something similar to what you got at 6,000 where, you know, you come down, bu uh, bump back up, take, uh, test another, te uh, test another lower high probably, and then come back down, you know, something like that. Um, again, this is an opinion, but, uh, but that's why I'm also not really in a hurry. I don't believe that we're going to see a big move, uh, like a big move, either making higher highs above this area over here or lower lows below this area over here. Um, you know, anytime in the next like week or two, if I'll put it that way, <laughs> you know, it's again, this is an opinion thing. My opinions, I don't fucking trade them. Um, over here, if big, if, if, and when Bitcoin does break a uh, 3000 or 3250, um, as shown uh, as I think better shown on the weekly 200 simple moving average represented by the red line right over here. Uh, then the next area that I do look towards for a potential bottom is this 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here, rounding out this blue box between about 2300 to 2600, some nice historical, um, horizontal trend lines right over here. And also if we put on the volume profile, there's going to be a nice high volume, thick node in this area, uh, bigger than what you did at 6,000, by the way, which we all saw how much how much of that you know <laughs> harass price action for a long time or, or kept it there more uh, more like um but again below 3200 right over here or 3250 more accurately uh there's very low volume nodes actually low value nodes in this area so it's likely going to be a rip below that area from from 3250 down to you know the high or sorry mid to high 2000s right over here uh, but this would be the next area that i look towards um it's also going to line up with our monthly 100 exponential if we go over here to the blx index it should have just enough information and there you are the cyan line coming in right around 2450 so i do like that um and then also you know if we are really working on what i presented uh earlier on in this stream as a descending triangle right over here well you can make a measure move on this guy as well and let's just see what he pops back pops back on over to as uh, so we can, you know, again, making an assumption here. This is making a massive assumption here, but that would be pointing you all the way down here to about where 30, 33, or sorry, 2350. So rounding out the lower of the, uh, of the, of that secondary blue box, um, down around here. Now, if this area does break, then, then yes, then, then, uh, then I start getting on this, on, on the, on the side of the team that starts saying, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to 1000 again. I think that is certainly possible to go all the way down to, to, to 1100 or 1300 down around here to the to this lower blue box territory, which is actually the 942 Fibonacci retracement. That's not going to be in your default tool, but yes, it is a Fibonacci. Um, but, uh, but again, the way that I do technical analysis is that, you know, if, if I see obvious points of potential reversal beforehand, I'm not it, like, you just, it's just not appropriate to say Bitcoin's definitely going down to low 1000s. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. There, you can't do that. You can't, it, you just, you can't tell price action what it's going to do. You can only come up with specific scenarios and then they're triggering factors and then basically come up with a good trade because it has a good risk reward. You can't literally just, the, the mark is always going to be right. Your opinion, I mean, my opinion, my opinion, your opinion, anyone's opinion, you know, it can be right sometimes. It can also be wrong sometimes. It's, it's, it's much more subjective. Uh, 
it's so I'm not saying that this is impossible to get down here. It's just you got to chew through this area first. And we saw how many things are coming in around that area. So that, you know, at the very least be getting all the bargain buyers in around here, all the heroes. Um, and then if that area breaks and I actually have this area right over here, which no one's talking about right around 1850, uh, which actually which does make me think that if Bitcoin did get there, that actually has a really high degree of being of being a potential bottom as well, um, just because no one's talking about it. And it's a it's actually a pretty big area. Uh, it would be a little bit off the former uh, the, the former market cycle high going all the way back to uh, to 2014. Oops, let's get this guy on over here. Um, uh, uh, this guy right over here, uh, and also kind of line it up with this prior uh, this prior spike low um, right over here. Sorry, this guy is what I'm is what I'm referring to. Um, so again, you know, one of those things, and I do believe that it actually ma matches up with the weekly uh, 377 exponential, which is like an ancient one. Let's actually just put that guy on just really really quickly. Uh, whoops, wrong one. Uh, three seven seven, and we're gonna have to go over here to the BLX, and let's see where that populates in around. Um, it's not, it's not popping up. Uh, oh, sorry, that's a monthly. That's why. Uh, okay, so here we go. Nope, the three, th the three seven seven is actually coming in down around uh, twenty six hundred. So yeah, I'm wrong on that. Um, but that would also just be more in the case of that, uh, that, that basically mid to low two thousands area. And it was put back on the two hundred just because that's what I want to look at right now. Um, but uh, but overall, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and that's kind of like the order of operations. And again, this is, you know, I don't want to make it sound like this is happening tomorrow or even this week or, or next week. It's going to likely take a long time. Again, there's no way to really say time analysis is not something that can be done as at least as far as I'm aware. Um, I haven't seen anyone be able to do it over time consistently, and I don't know any professionals who do it either. Um, so again, that's what I can say. I can come up with some with some potential ideas. If we go over here into the matrix, you know, you could maybe come up with some correlations. I don't want to go through this idea too much right now. If you're interested in some long term analysis and much more detailed long term analysis, go check out my playlist titled long term analysis because that's what it's for. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, looking at this guy right over here, if, if you're making a relation between these areas, you know, may, maybe mid-February for those mid to low 2000s, maybe, you know, if Bitcoin does get down to that 1800 level, maybe that would happen in April. Again, I think this whole thing is going to take a lot longer than anyone really expects. Um, and I can't highlight this enough for now. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think it's happening like right now, uh, but over time. So just like when we spoke about at the 6,000 level, you know, while I am overall bearish, while I do think lower lows are, are going to be made, it's not appropriate to be, you know, having trades in that direction until 6,100 is essentially broken. Um, and you, I mean, we all, we all remember how long that one took. Anyways, uh, if you want the full idea on this, go, go check out the long-term analysis playlist. Otherwise this just looks like fucking hocus pocus right here. And I totally agree. Um, but, uh, there are some interesting things certainly coming in around here. So I'll just leave it at that. I will get, I'll, I'll get back on over to, our uh, our bit Mexican exchange right over here and let's just quick uh, I, again I won't go too too deep into the long-term ideas but I do want to get on over to our other coins in just a second but just to round out what I'm looking for on Bitcoin to basically denote that the bear market is over is first things first but least important I need to see an uptrend on the daily hasn't do hasn't done that in over a year so that would be a really good start um, but it wouldn't be the finisher so getting above this guy right over here at around 30 uh, 4300 that would be a good start that would be a great start uh, second thing second is I want to see a weekly dildo both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average right over here. That's currently at uh, 4150. That would be very important. That would be very impressive. And if that happens, I would actually, um, I, I would change a lot of my tune overall. And I might even look for a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a long myself or, or like a starter position is what I like to call it. Um, and then third and final and most important, but probably going to be able to figure it out beforehand. Uh, but the, but the nail in the coffin would be getting back above the 6,000 area right over here when Bitcoin spends, you know, basically a year consolidating at the 6,000 level and then breaks down from there. Well, if you get back above that area, just by the most traditional, you know, means of geotechnical analysis, that would be it for me. I'd be looking for, for long-term longs to like actually hodl, you know, I'd, I'd become an investor once again, you know, <laughs> good old investor, hashtag honorable hodler, hashtag perseverance, hashtag <laughs> what, what else do they say? I don't even know, man. Um, <laughs> but again, <laughs> just one of those things. Hashtag dedication. Hashtag strong hands. Hashtag honorable. Hashtag I deserve it. Hashtag what the fuck. Hashtag why am I wrecked. Hashtag mom. Hashtag mom. Hashtag mom I'm wrecked. Holy shit, man. My neighbors must absolutely hate me. And I do apologize about the yelling, but uh, my voice is back now. So the yelling will commence. Um, <laughs> Anyways, it's like, no, hashtag no. <laughs>
<laughs> Again, uh, looking at all that kind of shit. Um, okay, so let's go back on over here to Mr. Buterol because Mr. Buterol has actually done something very interesting to me. And this is a complete counterpoint to what I'm looking at on Mr. Bitcoin right now um, because... On the higher time frames for Mr. Buterol, we have actually closed our first three-day dildo above the yellow 20-minute exponential for the first time ever since getting the death cross over here. In fact, this is the first time closing it above this uh, ever since literally over here when, when Mr. Buterol was above 600, 650 actually. Um, so technically speaking, yes, I want to see a three-day dildo both open and close above this area to actually confirm a kill of this guy. And that could be the impetus for getting this guy back to like 180, 190. I mean, it's possible. Again, like I said, on the lower time frames, in the more in the more low term time frames, uh, this looks like this looks like a local top to me. Looks like it wants to come back down, um, at, at least to about 155 and a half. If it does break 154, if it does start closing like an hourly or two hour dildo below there, then you know supports along the way. But I do believe that you'd start to lose your overall formation. But first things first, you know, you got 150, kind of your bounce area from yesterday. Then you got this area right over here, 144, and then you got this area right over here. But overall, I think you'd probably get a full retrace or at least returning to the kind of like the swing lows of this area, uh, down around 125 ish area. Um, so again. Keep your eyes on that uh, because this is event driven right now. Keep in mind that this is event driven from Mr. Buterol. So what does that mean? Well, that essentially means that, well, what that essentially means is you get event mentality and event psychology. And what typically happens when you get that? What typically happens when you have a hard fork or, or, or any sort of fork? Um, well, you get a run up into it because the professionals, the, 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 the market movers, the guys with deep pockets know that they can generate some, you know, FOMO because now they have the news piece on, on the mind. And it makes, it makes intuitive sense to your average retail investor because they need a justification for a move. They can't just understand that the only justification for a move is more buyers and sellers or more sellers and buyers. Which is which is actually the right which is actually the right way to understand that, um, but they but that's why you always hear people say, guys, uh, Nano just dropped fifty percent. Any news? It's like, yeah, more sellers and buyers. <laughs> that's your fucking news. Doesn't matter what the news is. People have subjective interpretations of these things. But the more important part uh, before I get si uh, sidetracked off this is that when you are looking at something like this and you do have an event, now the market movers can drive price up and then people think that it's, you know, it's it's because of something and so it's justified. So they buy in looking to do the same sort of thing. No, typically speaking, you get event psychology. I mean, nothing's really changing. Actually, actually, I, I'm wrong on that because you, because there is, there is a, uh, a reduction in block reward. So that is there is there is a good correlation with that, to be fair, to be to be completely fair. But but uh, but overall, you know, I'd still be careful with it just because we see Bitcoin still in a downtrend. And, you know, until we actually get bifurcation in this market, I'd still be going with basically the fact that they're all correlated until until told otherwise. So we don't have that yet. We still don't have that. If Buterol gets above 200, then we have that. Then that becomes a legitimate source of, uh, of 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 talking of a talking point but for now still don't necessarily have it doesn't mean it can't happen but i want to see it happen i want to see proof before proof and uh, before before i actually adopt that belief i'm completely open to adopting that belief but again need to see proof um so so there you go on that one um overall though you know when looking at this guy uh you also do have a couple of forks beforehand you know the free like the quote-unquote free coin bro forks bro Ethereum's forking, okay? And you know what? I want my ETN coins because they're going to be going to the moon real fucking fast. You heard about that? It's like Chinese Ethereum. It's like, great. Well, look at how Neo's been doing. <laughs> 200 down to fucking $5. Great. Fucking amazing, man. Um, again, that is, uh, again, event psychology typically, typically just typically just done up by professionals to drive up price and then dump on and and basically have liquidity to dump on um on the retailers and less educated people uh, and you guys have all seen this before you know with announcements with announcements of announcements in the case of tron or with you know forks or getting listed on exchange or just insert any sort of you know conference call here if you're if you're familiar with traditional uh, equities or you know whatever it might be earnings you know revenue reports all these sorts of things man a lot of the time you will see these things just being used by the bigger accounts to generate liquidity for themselves engineer liquidity for themselves what i like to say and what i refer to it in my programs is is, is as uh, institutional order flow basically just you know imagine trying to get filled on you know a billion dollars worth of uh worth of coin it's very difficult to do right or even 500 million dollars or even 100 million dollars you're going to move the market so what do you need to do you need to make people feel make people think generate the illusion of an inverted head and shoulders no i shouldn't have said that <laughs> but my point is is you know uh, it's it becomes a, it becomes a delicate game and yes patterns are painful 
tainted in this market. I don't necessarily know about Bitcoin, but certainly on the altcoins, especially like the Binance ones that don't have too much trading volume. You know, you see it whenever you see like those those patches of high volume and then nothing else, you know, next to it. That's a big signal. Be careful. Buyer beware. Uh, but no, I trust CZ. He seems like a great guy. <laughs> Cunt face. Just kidding. Anyways, uh, let's go check out spies. Um, there's something to be very, very interested on this guy. So everyone's getting very bearish on this guy again as well. Um, unless if Trump like puts Hillary Clinton in jail, I don't think that that is going to be breaking the uh, the 240ish area. Uh, if panic does, if panic does bring this thing back down to about 240, that's going to be a buy this week if that happens today. And yes, markets are coming under pressure today, so that is potential. Uh, that is a potential scenario. But again, it's not appropriate to get bearish on this guy until you actually close a weekly dollar below the 200 exponential and. The 200 exponential is currently sitting right around that 239 level. So 239, 240, if it gets back down there, I think that's just going to be a basically a bear trap. While I am overall bearish on this guy, just like I'm overall bearish on Bitcoin, I don't believe that I, I don't believe that you're going to be making lower lows just yet. I think it's going to take some time. In fact, for traditional markets, it's going to take probably a lot more time. Going off the monthly right over here. Um, while we have actually had a nice test of the 30 simple moving average, and that's a rejection, I'm not too fussed about that. I'd still be looking for a move anywhere around, you know, 255 to 260 ish area. That's likely to be the more traditional sell, in my opinion. Doesn't mean it has to get there. You know, maybe it, maybe this really is the top of the rally right here. Uh, but I would still, you know, I'd still be defense I, I would not be aggressive to the short side unless again the 200 exponential is closed below on a weekly total closing basis just like when bitcoin came down to the 200 simple for the first time i said okay Yes, I do believe that Bitcoin's going to be going lower, but I don't want to be short right here. And I don't really want to be holding like directional short positions in as, as long as it's in this range right here. Um, but uh, if you break this area right here, then yeah, I, I think it's appropriate once again. Um, same same thing on traditional markets, but they're actually a little bit easier to read. And uh, uh, as of the current moment, not always, um, but as of the current moment, cer certainly. And uh, and going off your higher time frames right over here, you just have to realize, I mean, not you have to realize, that sounds like I'm talking down with you. I don't want to ever come off like that because I feel like a lot of an other analysts do that, you know, insert name here. Um, and I don't and I don't want to be like that. And please, if you ever feel like I'm doing that, you be the one to call me out because I don't, that's... That is not my intention ever, um, but you know, you you had it, you, uh, you had an inver or sorry, a regular head and shoulders right over here, a uh, nice reversal pattern, and that did play out perfectly to the measured move on the downside right over here. You have some pretty nasty crosses on exponentials right over here. You have the daily dollar death cross coming in right over here. This was all the signals for me to kind of call out. Well, this is likely your bull trap, likely likely time to enter position right here. Definitely time to enter position right over here. Well. Well, coming back up to the upside, um, I would be looking for any you know any, anywhere again between 255 and 260 ish area uh, for uh, for the next short. Um, but uh, that you know I, I will be wrong on that uh, if if this if if this guy does break the 200 exponential today. Um, but assuming that it does not, it's probably you know probably going to be a bounce somewhere in this area, whether it's you know whether it's off of 243 or 240 ish area. One of these guys is likely to be it. It does look like it wants to come down a little bit lower. I would not rule out a quick test down to this area right over here, 241, 230, uh, 240 ish area. In this, I'm just, I'm actually going to put a nice blue box in this area. Um, uh, does that happen today? I mean, it's possible. There, there's a lot of turmoil on the markets right now, uh, but I'd be looking at this area. Probably, I think that this would likely be a buy if you did get back down around there. For, if not for anything, just for a nice little scalp. Um, but again, you know, I have to be delicate with the way that I relate these ideas because I don't want it to make it. While I am overall bearish on this thing, and while I do think that it, you know, probably at some point, you know, after this is after this is done getting resolved, does make its way down to the 220 to 210 area right over here. Also, our, you know, our, our monthly 100 exponential kind of hooking around right, right around this area uh, and siphoning off these uh, these horizontal horizontal trend lines, which historically speaking are actually kind of a big deal right over here. Um, it's going to take some time. It's going to likely take a lot of time, actually. So again, a uh, higher degree of perspective um, in mind. Let's go check out uh, Mr. Ripples over here. How's Mr. Ripples doing? Um, Mr. Ripples uh, weekly is pretty nasty rejection. Uh, no follow through on it just yet. What about the three day? We did close another three day yesterday. Yeah, so so Mr. Ripples is not following Mr. Buterall's footsteps, actually. In fact, Mr. Ripples, Ripple Me Timbers or Nipples, um, getting the three day dildo death cross right over here. Test test the 200 uh, exponential massive rejection and still closing every each and every one of these dildos below the 21 exponential. So as long as that's going on, you know, I'd play this one to the downside with looking for it to kind of come back down to its prior lows right over here. 
here. I'm sure people on crypto Twitter are calling this a head and shoulders. I mean, first things first, you don't even have your right, sh right shoulder right over here. Second thing, second, a head and shoulders is a reversal pattern, not a continuation pattern. Sometimes, every once in a while, it does appear as a continuation pattern, but more often than not, it is a reversal pattern. Um, so this would not really fit the bill on it. Uh, by the same token, you know, you do have some you do have some good supports coming in right around this range, right around about 28 to 27 cents, it looks like. Uh, if that area does break, though, that's probably going to be the next big trade, just like Bitcoin breaking 3200, uh, as I don't see much holding up from the high teens between about 16 and 19 cents is the next kind of support uh, area. So again, keep an eye on that one, um, because uh, if, if only Buterol is the one kind of taking off right now, that's actually not a good sign. If you only have one of the uh, of the assets, you know, basically doing something different, that does not account for the whole market. And I would still put the most weight on Mr. Bitcoin until proven otherwise, until proven otherwise. Let's go check out, I, I suppose we can go look at um, maybe XMR. How's, how's XMR doing? Yeah, XMR not looking healthy either. In fact, another rejection of this area, if we put on our our, uh, our horizontals. I haven't touched this chart in like months, um, but still holding true on this guy. So again, more of the same right over here. What about uh, XLM um, Stellar? Uh, 11 cents, you know, again, one of my, you know, overall, one of the better charts in cryptocurrency, but uh, breaking this area right over here, retesting it in a full on rejection of it is not a good look on this guy either. Um, so, and, and, and about to three day death cross actually as well. Very, very bad. So does this thing actually make its run down towards, you know, six cents or even four and a half cents? Uh, certainly very possible, but it's going to take some time as well. Um, and I probably, I probably imagine that that matches up with if and when Bitcoin actually does break 3,200, something like that. So it's going to take some time. Um, and, and, it's, and it's obviously not official either. But assuming that you don't see a rally back above uh, 19 cents, um, you will get that death cross. Uh, and, uh, and and more appropriately, as long as it's below uh, 14 cents, don't really have any interest in it. But, you know, I, I do like to point out, you know, understand that this th this is a stark contrast to just about every other altcoin in the space that pumps all the way up and then dumps literally all the way back down to where you started from. This guy has held held up relatively well, but this is still not. I mean, it's still lower highs and lower lows. <laughs> it's a fucking bearish chart. There is, you know, you, we're just comparing shit with piss right now. But that one's like that one's like shiny. You know, it's it's. It's like you it's like you take a dump and then you look at it and you're like wow i'm impressed by my own self <laughs> a lot of ground beef in that one uh anyways uh uh, uh hourly 200 simply moving average still holding up price action right now for bitcoin uh, i do want to do the daily rounds in the bitcoin mbt signal kind of suggesting that uh yep still Still plenty of room to go to the downside. This thing is called every top and every bottom in market site in Bitcoin's market cycle history perfectly. Um, and it bottoms out wherever where my curse currently is now or a little bit lower. And you can see that we are actually kind of in the middle after pumping up back to the 100 level right over here. Um, so again, that actually, you know, again, put in perspective on timing. This it's gonna, gonna likely take some time. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so we talked about that. We talked about that. I guess we can just briefly go over why I don't believe we've seen the lows just I mean, do I really want to go over this right now? Volume's not right. Time spent at the low is not right. Percentage gain is not right. There you go. Again, if, if you want the full-on explanation of that, go to the long-term analysis page, or sorry, long-term analysis, uh, analysis playlist. Um, there is a much, much, much more detailed explanation there. Uh, but I think that this video is probably long enough already, and I don't, and I, you know, I want to be respectful of your time. So if you want, if you want the more in-depth explanation of that, me going through every little example of that, definitely go check that, uh, check that one out. But for now, I'm just gonna uh, kind of close it out here. So again, we can look for all the clues in the charts. We can look at Mr. Buterall kind of looking like it wants to reject itself. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, make it easy on yourself. Do you do we see 3,900 break first, or we do, or do we see 3,700 break first? Whichever one happens, that's gonna be likely your next trade direction. If it breaks out to the upside, don't really see too much stopping you from about 4,100. If it breaks out to the downside, there's supports along the ways, but I do believe at the very least you'd be getting back down to about 3,450. And uh, probably, in my opinion, is that it probably does get down to about 3,250. Again, it's not going to happen in like in one in just one move. It's gonna you know it's gonna take some time, but uh, but something like that, you know. And again, as you can see, there's supports along the ways, um, along the way. And, uh, and that's essentially what I'm thinking right now. So I hope this one finds you well. I'll be back on a little bit later with, a, with some live stream action. Look forward to see you guys there. If not, I wish you the best of the best weekend, the best possible ever. Um, and yeah, take care.